Happy Monday. The hitter and pitcher matchups are on fire, but I am not. Let's talk some baseball. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and here we go. Another week of MLB baseball. I cannot wait. Um, it was just an awful betting weekend for my actual best bets over the weekend. I mean, we'll go over it. It was one of the worst weekends I've ever had in baseball. I think we lost three times on the hook, blah, blah, blah. We'll go over all that. But this is why it's so important to see all the different parts of the video because Thursday's research help hitter matchups, six of six hitters got a hit. Uh, one of them didn't play pitcher strikeout matchups. We had none stats from Friday. This is crazy. Eight of 11 players that I listed on the good hitter matchups got a hit on Friday. The pitcher strikeout matchups, four of the five starting pitchers went over their case prop. I bet the one that didn't. Gosh, am I good or what? Uh, and four of those five had seven or more strikeouts. I mean, the research help has been there. Maybe I should start using my own research, huh? That's a good idea. I know you're already thinking it. But anyways, it's just a good reminder that there's a lot of info in this video. Um, uh, and so make sure you're just not here to see a couple best bets and, and move on. But we will turn this around. I know we will. Um, and then I have an announcement. We are going to do a Dinger Tuesday contest. That's right, a cash giveaway to the winner. We'll talk more details in the Monday night video for the Tuesday games, um, but just be prepared. I just want to let you know I think it's going to be fun. We might even do it every single week. Have you guys involved and uh, see who can pick some uh, some winners for the Dinger. So uh, we have no NBA games on Monday, so there will be no video. We're on a nice little run there. Just a national title game, Purdue and UConn. In my bracket, I did pick Purdue to win it all. I think they got a chance, but UConn is freaking good. But I would take the six and a half. Just my little tidbit. But again, I'm not following college basketball as detailed as I usually did. Um, but anyways, that should be a heck of a game. It's the game we all wanted to see. So enjoy that. But we got a 12-game slate on Monday for the MLB. I'm ready to get into it. I'm ready to turn the best bets around. Um, but I am enjoying as a sports fan. It's been a fun baseball season so far. Um, so I just love day games, too. Those are the best. But anyways, here we go. Let's get into it. Of course, it starts with a baseball fun fact. And by the way, I have no idea why I called him Cecil Fielder Jr. I mean, when you do these videos at midnight every single night almost, it's going to happen. I know his name is Prince Fielder. But anyways, here's another one. Baseball fun fact. Knuckleball pitcher Joe Necro had 1,165 at-bats. He's a pitcher, so not a ton, in a 22-year career because pitchers hit in those 1,165 at-bats, he had one home run. That's not the crazy fun fact. The one home run, it came off his brother, Phil Necro, um, May 29th, 1976. Some of you guys, you baseball historians may already know that one. I did not know that. That's just absolutely wild to have one home run in the major leagues and it's off your freaking brother. That's crazy. But anyways, that's the fun fact today. In this video, we are going to recap the awful, and I mean awful, weekend for all of those that joined from the final round. It's been ugly for the first few days since you joined me. I texted Jordan that. I let him know, um, and he took full blame. So it's all on him. I just want you guys to know that. It has nothing to do with me. No, anyways. Um, and then uh, good hitter matchups, of course. We're going to talk good pitcher strikeout matchups again. Go over that pitcher report and then give you some best bets and wrap it all up with the bets recap. So hit that like button. Leave a comment below. Help this channel grow. And if you are new to the channel, Hit that subscribe button. This community is absolutely awesome. I do not thank you guys enough. You guys are what's allowing us to do this and talk sports every day, which has been my dream. So we appreciate it. Let's see if we can get to 23,000 subscribers by the end of the week. But without further ado, let's talk some baseball. Here we go, guys. This is it. This is the part I did not want to talk about. I cannot believe the weekend we had. Um, we better not have a weekend like this again. That's for sure. But Friday went one and three. Um, look at just what happened. I just made some notes because it's hard to put every single game on here. The Reds were 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position. I don't know what else to say. And by the way, that means the guy on second or third, 0 for 11, didn't get one big hit, scored one run. Logan Gilbert over 17 and a half outs. He had 71 pitches entering the sixth inning. I just needed three more outs. I thought he might even go seven innings. That's how well it was going. He had a 10 or 11 pitch at bat to Willie Adamas that ended in a walk. And then he gave up a solo home run. He ended on the hook. With five and two thirds innings pitch, you just can't make it up. I just don't know what to say. And then, uh, of course, Cutter Crawford, the only K prop that didn't hit out of those five good pitcher strikeout matchups. I bet him he lost on the freaking hook. That's right. He couldn't get that six K. 
Um, then Saturday, another 0 for 2 day. The one that hurt, uh, I had one read that I thought was good, but it was not. Joe Ryan, um, he struck out the side in one inning, and uh, that was ugly. So anyways, but Saturday, uh, Garrett Whitlock, 4 Ks through 3 innings. All I needed was 5. That's it. Easy. 3 innings, 4 Ks already. He's done. He never, ever, ever, ever got that 5th K. I'm still waiting for it. And so, of course, we lost on the hook. And yes, the hook still counts as a loss. That hook just means I'm telling you how we lost. It was it was tough. And then Sunday, I put a Yurfi out there because why not? We've been good on Yurfi Nerfies. I was looking into it. Braves have been scoring a ton. D-backs scored more runs than anybody in the first inning. 0-0. Zero, zero, six up, six down in the first. And then the Braves decide to score two runs in the second inning. It happens. Yurfi and Nerfies are kind of dart throws sometimes. But And then Sanchez, under one and a half walks on Sunday, if you saw that. He walked two plus batters for the only the fourth time in his last 19 starts. I guys, it's just that kind of a weekend for us. It just was. In fact, he walked three batters, which I think it was his only second time in his last 19 starts. Just wild stuff. But you know what? I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you guys how we lost. It was rough. So um, the reads were there. There's a lot of reads I like. And when you're betting, that's all you can do, guys. We're not playing for these guys. Um, so if you love your reads and you think like you're getting there, I had a couple bad reads. And then I think I had some good reads that just didn't work out. But uh, we're going to get it turned around. We're going to get some good luck. I know we will. It is an extremely long season. So we go up from up winning uh, some units to down 4.48. And now it's time to turn it around. So anyways, that's the week weekend bets recap. And before we get into the best bets, it's time for some research help. And that starts with the good hitter matchups. All right, we got 12 good hitter matchups on April 8th. And like I said, 14 of the last 17 hitters that we've given out have gotten a hit. So here we go. Uh, we got. I'm not going to go through everyone, but the most at bats by far, Mar- Marcel Ozuna of the Braves, 19 for 53, seven extra base hits, which is a double, triple, or home run. Four of those were home runs versus Julio Tehran, who just got picked up by the Mets. Um, so that's a good matchup. And then Cattell Marte, who's just been hitting pretty well this year, and it seems like he's on here every single day. 15 for 43, nine extra base hits versus the awful awful Kyle Freeland and then a couple Astros Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman doing well against Andrew Heaney the lefty um, Charlie Blackman so on and so on uh, Michael Conforto swinging a good bat he did cool off last two games but still swinging a good bat this year and then Bryce Harper the man five for 16 two extra base hits and a home run versus miles and miles of Mikolas. Um but anyways yeah those are the matchups Tim Anderson down there on the Marlins for those of you that don't know he's on the Marlins now um, but five for 11, all singles versus nasty Nestor Cortez. So those are the good hitter matchups. Take a screenshot. Hopefully it's already been helping you guys get some winners and hopefully it helps you get some more. But now it's time to move on to the good pitcher strikeout matchups. All right, I found three matchups that I liked. And I do want to say one thing, uh, one that's not on here, Zach Gallon versus the Rockies. You might think it should be on here. Um, the reason I didn't include it is because I made an executive decision because Zach Gallon's uh, K percentage rate goes down from like 30 to about 22% on the road from last year. And the Rockies K rate on the road compared to being in Coors Field goes down a decent amount too. So it ended up being just kind of an average matchup. It doesn't mean Gallon can't strike out a lot of guys. I just wanted to point that out because I am here to give you as much info as possible. But the first one, Mitch Keller versus the Tigers. Tigers, six highest K percentage versus righties. Again, probably for another week or so, we're going to use 2023 stats because it's just a little easier. Some pitchers are making their first start still. Some are on second or third. I just It's kind of hard to compare. Um, but Keller, 210 in- Ks in 194.1 innings last year. And then this year, just so you know, I want to make a note, three and five strikeouts only in the first two starts. They were against Miami and Washington. Washington does not strike out a lot at all, and he actually struggled in both. I think he gave up four earned runs in both starts. That is not good to those two offenses. I will say that doesn't mean he can't turn around because he was much better at home last year, and this is his first home game. So um, then next one, Zach Eflin versus the Angels. You're going to see the Angels up here a lot. Angels last year, fifth highest K percentage versus righties, 25.3%. Eflin, 210 Ks and 165.2 innings. And in his two starts, he had five Ks in each game versus the Toronto Blue Jays and the Texas Rangers, both teams that are harder to strike out than these Angels, that's for sure. And then the final one, the ex-Mariner, Big Maple, James Paxton versus the Minnesota Twins. Twins, fifth highest K percentage versus lefties last year, 25.2%. Paxton last year, 101 and 96. You know, he's a good strikeout pitcher, not a lead or anything like that, but he's been good. Um, And then a quick note, he had five Ks in five innings in his first start versus the Giants, who were kind of similar to the twins at least last year um against righties so or against lefties sorry 
But anyways, those are the three best pitcher strikeout matchups. Hopefully one, two, or three of these can help you get some winners. Again, this doesn't mean auto bet. It means check the lines and use these numbers and see if you find a good bet. So those are it. And now it's time for the pitcher report. Here are the first seven matchups for April 8th. As you can see up there on the top, the White Sox do not have a pitcher named. Um, I saw Tristan McKenzie for the Guardians on some places. Some didn't have a name, so be sure to check that out, obviously. Um, but all these stats are still 2023. Like I said, probably another week, and then we'll start including this small sample size of 24. Um, but just some news and notes right there. The Mariners-Blue Jays game. Uh, first of all, both teams off to a rough start. Luis Castillo has struggled. I mean, he has mightily struggled, as has most of the Seattle Mariners, because why? They are the Seattle Mariners. Um, but he has struggled the first two starts, so we'll see if he can get back on track against a struggling offense in the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, it's been a rough go for them this year so far. And then Julio Tehran, who just got picked up by the Mets, will be making his first start. Welcome back to the club, to the show. You get to face the Atlanta Braves. So that doesn't sound fun. Um, Bailey O'Bear down there, you know, not a terrible pitcher in my opinion. Um, but there's some K rates and all the numbers. If you are new, you can see K percentage, walk percentage, and then all the averages on the bottom from 2023, just to kind of give you something to go off of. Expect the ERA to kind of say, you know, is, are they uh, due for positive, negative regression, all that kind of stuff. The average innings and record obviously does not matter. But just want to point that out if you are new to seeing this. But we got a matchup of lefties in New York with Jesus Lazardo against Nasty Nestor Cortez as the Miami Marlins under win total that I gave out as a future is looking absolutely awesome right now. So, um, But anyways, that's the first page of matchups. Take a screenshot. Hopefully this helps you get some winners, um, whatever it is, because there's a lot of different ways you can go here if you like to bet walks, strikeouts, um, just who gives up a lot of hits or just who's a better matchup. Um, but I do recommend just seeing, you know, who started this year, what their first or second start looked like, um, and compare it with the 23 and all that. So that's page one. Let's move on now to page two. All right, here is page two of the pitcher report. And real quick, before I start out, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last page, uh, but Mitch Keller last year, 2.90 ERA at home compared to a 5.35 ERA on the road. I mean, it's been that different. And he had two road starts already. This will be his first home start. Maybe he starts dominating at home again. I just want to point that fact out. But on the second page, down there at the bottom, the reigning Cy Young Award winner when he played for the Padres, Blake freaking Snell is back. Look at those numbers. It's interesting. 2.25 ERA somehow with a 3.65 expected ERA. That's right. Um, and that's no joke. He won a Cy Young with a 13.3% walk rate. It is not pretty. That's just what he does. He nibbles around guys. He'd rather walk them and just deal with them on base. One of the best pitchers last year with guys on base, obviously. Um, and still a high strikeout rate at 31 and a half. So the hard thing now is uh, he didn't get a full spring training. He's a Scott Boris client, got signed late, um, probably going to be on a pitch count and all that kind of stuff. He could come out and be the wild and crazy Blake Snell from two years ago and just absolutely struggle, or he could still dominate like he did last year. So that is just something to keep in mind, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, Zach Gallen there for the D-backs facing the Colorado Rockies again, this time in Coors Field. He has not pitched in Coors Field since 2022, just so you guys know. Um, but obviously, like I mentioned earlier, his strikeout rate on the road was about 22% last year compared to about 30% at home. So keep that in mind. And the Rockies struck out less in Coors Field because it's just harder to pitch and harder to strike out, guys. It's been said, the rumor is that your pitches, your off speed, all those kind of pitches just do not break as much in that altitude. So it's easier to hit, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, uh, Spencer Turnbull uh, had a good first start, actually, for the Phillies facing Miles and Miles and Mikolas who I just don't think is any good at all. And then Framber Valdez of the Houston uh, Astros facing Andrew Heaney of the Texas Rangers there. Um, we'll see if Valdez can have a good start here. Ronel Blanco for them has just been on a roll. That was unbelievable seeing him have a no-hitter again going into like the sixth inning. But anyway, so you got you Darvish, Assad with the Cubs having a nice series versus the Dodgers over the weekend. But uh, that's what we got. That is the pitcher report for april 8th hopefully this helps you get a lot of winners whatever way possible or maybe it's just a good start for your betting research for the day um, but that's what we got for the pitcher report and you know what that means it's time for the best bets all right this segment of the show is brought to you by better bet that's btr bet the best place to find track analyze and share your bets click that link below in the description and go check it out this first game takes us out to the ATL. We got the Atlanta Braves hosting the New York Mets. We got Braves on the money line at a whopping minus 210. Mets money line plus 176. Total in this game is nine and a half runs. 
I'm going to get right to it. My best bet in this game is the Braves on the run line. Give me minus one and a half at only minus 113 on FanDuel. That's right. So I'm surprised by this number. I thought it'd be the more like minus 140, minus 150. Uh, the Braves versus right-handed pitching. I don't know what else to say, guys. It's unbelievable. Absolutely ripping the cover off the ball right now. 353 average. That is first place in the major leagues versus righties by a lot. I mean, the second place is the Rangers, 303. That's right, 50 points higher. 168 WRC plus, weighted runs created plus, an overall way of telling you how good your offense is. That is number one in the MLB. Only one other team is even above 136. The average, by the way, is 100. ISO power, number one in the league at 249 by quite a bit. On base percentage, 407, number one in the league by far. Next best is Texas at 381. The second lowest K rate at 17.5%. It's just flat out not fair to opposing pitchers. This lineup is ridiculous from st- from top to bottom. Um, and then, of course, who gets to face him? Mr. Julio Tehran. That's right. Like I mentioned earlier, he just got signed by the Mets. That should tell you right there how good he is. He's not obviously wanted by all the teams. And also, as you saw earlier, 5.16 expected ERA last season, 71.2 innings. Um, he just doesn't miss many bats either. I mean, that's just not going to be good. Lots of contact by Braves hitters is a very good thing when you're on the Braves side. Uh, the one thing he did do well is limit walks. So pretty much you're going to say he's going to pitch a lot of strikes, which is good. Um, his PLV, if you care about that, pitch level volume on how good his pitches were, not counting the result of the of the at-bats and stuff, just how good his pitches were. Average of 4.75 on 0 to 10. They just weren't good. They're sixth percentile. That's how good his stuff was last year. And then he also had only a 9.9% swinging strike rate. Does all this matter? I think it kind of does. It's part of it. Um, And I'm just a baseball nerd, as you guys know. But 9.9% swinging strike rate, guys. That is not very good. So he's a guy who throws strikes if he pitches like last year. And he's a guy who doesn't get a lot of swings and misses. Sign me up for that one. Um, in In his only start in Atlanta last year, he pitched five innings, gave up nine earned runs on 11 hits. And uh, he did pitch another game, I think, right before that. He did decently well. Um, Didn't strike out a ton of guys, but did decently well. I think he held him like two runs or something. Um, But then again, that was at home, not in Atlanta. So on the other side, you got Charlie Morton, the 40-year-old veteran. He's fine, guys. 3.64 ERA last year. He's an innings eater um, at 40 years old still. In his first start, he gave up zero earned runs and five innings to the White Sox. It is the White Sox, but I'm going to tell you, the Mets aren't much better, that's for sure. He's the definition of an average innings eater, solid, just veteran pitcher. He should be fine against this Mets offense. Why? Because they are the worst team in WRC+. Plus. That's right. We have a, a matchup of the number one offense in the league versus the num- or the dead last offense in the league. Their WRC+, plus is 50 Seven. Second lowest batting average. These guys are hitting 174 off righties right now. It is not pretty. Do I think they're going to hit 174 all season? No, but they're not a great lineup. Lowest OPS in the MLB, so on and so on. It's just not pretty for them. So best offense versus the worst offense, the better starting pitcher. I don't always bet run lines minus one and a half for the home team because they're only going to get eight at bats. But I'm going to make an exception here because I think the Braves are going to absolutely shellac the New York Mets. So give me the Braves. Minus one and a half at surprisingly good odds of minus 113. All right, the second bet is a hitter parlay. Give me Marcelo Zuna and Bryce Harper. One plus hit each at minus 124 on FanDuel. Like I mentioned, 14 of the last 17 hitters on that good hitter matchups report has gotten at least one hit. These two guys are on it today. Let's use that research and start out with Mr. Marcelo Zuna. As you saw, 19 for 53 versus Julio Tehran. Lots of ABs. He will not be surprised by anything because he has seen him quite a bit. I'm going to be honest, though. I don't think any Braves are going to be uh, surprised by much, as I already talked about in the last bet. But um, Ozuna happens to be in great form, which you like to see, obviously, as well. Hitting 323 this year and 31 at-bats, and he has one-plus hit in every single game this year so far. That's only seven games, but still good to see. And he hits unbelievably well at home. If you go off last season numbers, how about a 301 average at home compared to 244 on the road? He crushes in Atlanta. I like his over one and a half bases as well. If you want to do that instead, maybe a sprinkle on a home run. Um, But give me Marcelo Zuna as the first leg. And the second leg, Bryce Harper, one plus hit. We got a Christmas tree alert, baby. That's right. He is facing miles and miles of Mikolas. He is going to get lit up. Mikolas is just a struggle bus, especially at home. Last season, 
5.55 ERA, 113 hits allowed in 99 innings. And Harper, is, as you already know, is 5 for 16 off Mikolas. Uh, Mikolas does not miss many bats, which, you know what, as a Christmas tree, you can't miss many bats. That's just not what you do. Um, he has given up 14 hits in 10.1 innings so far this season. Uh, Bryce Harper, one plus hit in five straight games after going hitless in his first two games this year. Um, you know, the only thing against this is that Bryce Harper did struggle a little bit on the road last year. Um, but that doesn't really worry me. It's Bryce Harper. He's a superstar. He's fa- He's been on the road three times this year. He has a hit in every single game. Uh, Miles Mikolas, 15% K rate only versus lefties last season, which is not good, which means more than likely Bryce Harper is going to make contact because Miles also has a 3.9% walk rate. That's what you like to see. He didn't walk many batters. You want, you do not want to walk. That's the last thing you want when you have a hitter parlay. Um, so I love Bryce Harper to get another hit, stay hot. We got two hitters that are hitting the ball really well, have been on a streak getting a hit, and have very good matchups. Give me Marcelo Zuna and Bryce Harper to both get a hit each. And by the way, the guy who just missed the cut was Jose Altuve. I, he, I almost did him. Maybe you can add him to this if you want a three-legger or add him somewhere else. He's got a good matchup. I, he's been hitting the ball well. I also like him just to give you some more info. But that is my second best bet. And now I'm going to add more in the morning, but I have a lot of leans for you and some ideas that I'm looking at right now. And like I said, these videos, I want to give you as much information as possible. I'm going to run through these five ideas that I have right now. Um, you know, we do these videos late at night. So, uh, you know, one of these might make the card, maybe two of them. We'll, we will see. Um, but just to give you ideas. First one, Cubs Padres Nerfy. Huh? How about a little Nerfy? We might get in on that. Um, game total is seven and a half for a reason. Um, it's Assad versus Darvish. I think two decent pitchers here. The only scare I have is Padres have actually scored a decent amount in the first inning. Um, but anyways, that is an option. Saw so at minus 130. Another one, Jose Barrios over 17 and a half outs recorded uh, for the Blue Jays. Um, he's been better at home. He's facing my Mariners. They suck on offense. And uh, he's already gone over in both starts this season. So Jose Barrios might not be a bad option to go over 17 and a half outs, which means he needs to pick pitch six innings. The third one, he wasn't on the pitcher mat- strikeout matchup, but Trevor Williams over three and a half Ks. He is not a very good strikeout pitcher. I will say that, but this is the number here, guys. This is three and a half. It's pretty low. He's had four and five in his first two games. We're not asking for a ton of Ks. Um, Giants are a top 10 strikeout team versus righties, meaning they strike out quite a bit. So that's another idea I have. Fourth one, I mean, it's the Dodgers money line. It's Paxton versus Obera. We're talking, let's just say the pitchers are about even. Are the Dodgers and the Twins even? Not even close. And I'm only saying I like the Dodgers money line because the odds right now, I saw minus 145, maybe minus 150 in some books. It seems kind of low. Obviously, minus 150, That I don't usually do single bets there. Maybe you can add something to it, but maybe bad weather, which is maybe a stay away for me. Um, but I do like the Dodgers here. They're just a better team. And then the fifth and final one, D-backs minus one and a half or D-backs team total over in the first five, first seven total games, something like that. Kyle Freeland is awful. He is just not good at all, especially in Coors Field because it's hard to pitch there. Um, And I think the D-backs can put up a lot of runs on him. I think they can absolutely smash him. So D-backs, any way you slice it, I do like them as well. But those are my five leans along with my two best bets, along with all that research help. Again, any added plays will be in the pinned comments. They will be on X and they will be in Discord. All right, that was fun talking some baseball. Now let's check out the bets recap. All right, there it is. Two best bets so far, along with those leans I mentioned, but Braves minus one and a half. Hopefully they just win by a million against the Mets. And then Marcelo Zuna and Bryce Harper, one plus hit each at minus 124 on FanDuel. Again, I will probably add, well, I definitely will add one more play, maybe two added plays in the morning. It will be in the pinned comments below. It will be on X and it will be on Discord. Thank you guys for all the support. I know it was a rough weekend on just the best bets, but hopefully you're getting some winners on those hitter parlays and everything else we're getting out or hitter matchups. So um, that's what we got. Let's have a great week and hope you have a great Monday and we'll talk to you soon.